while. So I would not mind something along those lines. This is already looking like a hundred gold start, by the way. Looking at the rest of the act. Do we not do three elites? No, there's one path that hits three elites, but it's zero rest site. Not quite. It's a bit backward. So I think we should hit an early shop. What about the burning elite? There's a couple of options here. Mark one in green. Also go to this elite. This elite, but then you go, don't get the rest site. There's also then, let's mark in red here. Double elite into third elite. I think I would only do this three elite path if the first shop had Sling of Courage or Preserved Insect or something like that. Otherwise, I'd prefer to go to the green path, get the extra upgrade, probably. Either way, I think we're choosing 100 gold here. That's going to give us a pivotable amount of money. Um, we could also go, actually, let's mark one more option in red here, which is that we proceed over to this elite and grab the burning elite. This only gets two rest sites, two elites, but we do get the green key. So we have three path options. Optionality, I like to call it. Definitely a valuable thing on any character in Slay the Spire. It allows you to delay your decision making until you get more information, which is very useful. The more you play this game, the more you come to understand that information really is power. Knowing what's coming up, what you have already, whether you've gotten potions or not. These are all powerful things to know. Super Prismatic Shard mod. I think I could be convinced to do that. We're going to have a modded Spire Day coming up on uh, Saturday. Trying out a couple new mods. Why is Rare Card not an option here? I really don't like uh, Curse as a start. You have to get rid of that curse pretty quickly, or you're going to suffer big damage. Uh, and in particular, curse and rare card could end up being a double downside. Uh, if we don't get a rare card that's good, let's say, for example, I get offered Berserk Demon Form Barricade, as well as obtaining a Doubt Curse. And then my first fight is Jawworm. That Jawworm fight could really really hurt. Like, we're talking 30 to 40 health lost just to the first fight um, if you get two bad cards from this. So you'd, you'd have to skip the rare. Then you have a curse for nothing. That's even worse. I don't even want to think about it. That, that sounds like a bad way to start a run. Even if you got a good rare, the, the curse can really make that starting fight quite bad. Skinny Skills, thanks for the Prime sub and the 10 months of support. It's like 100 gold. Go all in on a zero streak, though. I mean, sure, but consider this. If I don't take the gold to start, I can't buy Brimstone from the first shot. Also, it is Jawworm, so... Rare card takers, consider your doom. Just consider it. Might have been correct to play Bash on that previous turn, but we'll see. Sure looks like it was. Uh-oh. Hmm. Oh, good. Okay, we got the double buffs, so that's not too bad. Or as Jawworm fights go. Not too bad. Let's see, we're fighting the slime boss. H have I mentioned my dislike for first floor clothesline yet? Let's prove it. I'm going to take heavy blade over clothesline because I really don't like clothesline starts.
14 damage for two energy is relatively inefficient, um, but it does get the job done sometimes. Fair enough. I like it more than Sword Boomerang. Do we take two? No, I take an Infernal Blade. I like Infernal Blade. Close line often leaves you hanging out to dry. And yeah, it is still better than two strikes. Can you buy first can you buy brimstone in the first shop with no disarm in sight? I say yes you can. Yeah. Especially when if you're fighting slime boss, like you definitely can. Because you're you're clear until at least pretty much act three at that point. Um, you have you have essentially the whole game where you can just smork things and look for greedy picks to prepare for the heart. You have a long, long time to get a functioning build together. It is not, however, brimstone. It's a waffle that we probably don't want. We could also buy ceramic fish, which is questionable. Uh, let's see. This is not a Searing Blow start. We actually tried Searing Blow recently, and I couldn't get it to work. Actually, there is one for upgrade path, huh? Hmm. Now, hold on a gosh dang minute. It's on sale, too, huh? Wait a minute. I'm willing to try this again. I feel like I need to redeem Searing Blow, for one. It's also wildly entertaining. And it's good against um, Slime Boss. And there's a Headbutt here with it, which is what I really like. Sering Blow Headbutt. Sering Blow Redemption Run. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Buy Card Remove, not the other thing. Not the other thing. Cool. Actually, I probably shouldn't have bought the card removed because I'm going to this shop. But thankfully, we get more money. So the shop will still be fine. Something, something, lousy turn one. She do want to headbutt a strike here. Bonk. Double tap this early? What? Okay. Hello. That's certainly a combo card, both with uh, Heavy Blade and with Green Blow, of course. Which is going to be our upgrade target at pretty much every opportunity here. The first upgrade only gives Sering Blow plus four damage, but from there it does get kind of ridiculous. As each upgrade is better than the last. Ooh, blood for blood. Get wrecked, sir. Twenty bucks. And we don't want more two-cost attacks. I think that's uh, overkill here. In fact, generally with Searing Blow, you want as few cards as possible. Task 3, here's to 17 wins in a row, and then three victory laps. Thanks for 17 months. Is this a VOD from yesterday? If you upgrade Searing Blow with Armaments or Apotheosis, no, it is not permanent, unfortunately. If only it were. Ornithopter is good. Any source of healing is going to be very valuable because of the fact that we want to upgrade at every fire. I'm also grateful we got a little bit of money in that chest, enough to buy a relic here if we want one. Or... Consider this an on-sale immolate to give us an AoE option with a Searing Blow. We could also afford Shockwave, which is not bad either. Lantern's decent if we want a Relic. Juzu Bracelet, though. 
farm events for upgrades. Yeah, Natalie wants Neko Eye, desperately. Desperately wants Neko Eye. I mean, that's just ironclad in general, right? I think I'm going to keep buying cards. These are good cards. These are strong cards. Immolate. What's up? I miss you, Immolate. There you are. Get toasted. Okay, these we probably don't want. Anger, zero cost is kind of nice alongside the expensive deck, but we don't want so many cards that we can't draw a Searing Blow repeatedly. Uh, and that's what Anger will interfere with. Let's not do that. I'm going to wake with something like Double Tap Searing Blow or just Shockwave, maybe. Double Tap Bash is fine, too. K9 Mancer, thanks for nine months. Yeah, we can do Double Tap Bash and then Shockwave next turn. That's pretty good. I don't want to Double Tap Immolate without Voln. Paylor tells you all the rules of Spire and then proceeds to show you when to break them. That's right. Every rule has an exception. Spire is definitely an example of that. I'm playing Shockwave next turn. I think we want to play Infernal Blade now. Yeah. I like that. Alright, you can hit me for 15. That's fine. I guess you can do it again if you really want to. Ow. Mm. Oh, good. That wasn't too bad. We secure a bird-faced urn, healing us two upon playing a power card. Interesting. Oh. You don't say. Yoink. One of my favorite cards of all time. Dark Embrace draws us cards whenever cards are exhausted. And it heals us too. I don't need convincing beyond that. I already kind of wanted a Corruption, uh, so now I have a really good excuse to take a Corruption as well. But I am going to keep upgrading Searing Blow. One might be tempted to do things like upgrade the Immolate or the Shockwave or the Double Tap or something, but nope. Just Searing Blow. All Searing Blow all the time. This is a pretty good Forge Potion. It makes the Searing Blow strong enough to one-shot the Slime, and then I can play Defend plus block 8. Otherwise, I have to play Searing Blow Strike, kill the Slime, take 12. So this saves me 8 health right now. And it heals for 5, and we're 60% chance to get a new Potion. So let's do that. A little tempting to play Immolate, right? But it doesn't kill the Acid Slime, so I can't also play the Defend. We need specifically Searing Blow to one-shot there. Then I can just go Shockwave, hit butt the Searing Blow. Searing Blow kills. And we do get a potion back. Oh, we also get a Battle Trance. Zero cost, draw three. One of the best cards for a during blow deck, or a small ironclad deck in general, although not that we're necessarily going to be small here. Um, bonus card draw is super helpful for getting back to the almighty Searing Blow. Hmm. Go Shockwave here. Good. This does 50. I can headbutt it. I want a battle trance. I don't think I actually do. I want to be able to draw a double tap. 
or Infernal Blade alongside the Searing Blow. Double Tap would actually just be an instant kill. Did not get Double Tap. I think 26 is a good enough split, though, probably, since we have Immolate and all that. Garbage. Hmm. Mildly unfortunate, I suppose. Let's just do this. We couldn't need to use either of these potions, but we will if we get a really, really bad draw. It's not bad enough. Uh, kill you, headbutt the Searing Blow. All right, Searing Blow made very short work of Slime Boss. And I'm going to click on Offering. Offering is lots of card draw and more energy here. And the fact that we have two healing relics already means we can afford the hit points pretty easily. Um, having more energy is going to allow us to do things like play Shockwave, Double Tap, Immolate in one turn. Or Searing Blow, Headbutt, Redraw, and then replay the Searing Blow. Crazy shenanigans like that will get enemies dead real fast. Not a terrible impervious here, but I'd strongly prefer offering, especially in Act 2. Damage is king, so all we have to do to win is keep killing enemies as quickly as we can. Offering will help with that a lot. Yeah, Coffee Dripper, Sneko Eye would be two of the best relics to see here. I would actually be okay with Velvet Choker at the moment. And I would fall for the Pyramid Trap again, too. We do get offered Coffee Dripper. Energy every turn, no resting, it says, but we've got those aforementioned three healing relics. And the current plan is to upgrade the Searing Blow all the time. I actually wouldn't hate Black Blood. Heal 12, further increase the healing, and just ensure that we can continue to upgrade even if we never get to rest. But I think that one extra energy is much, much better because it'll the four energy means we can play two two-cost cards in the same turn without drawing the offering, which is kind of important. Bash Searing Blow, Shockwave Searing Blow, Immolate Searing Blow, all of these things are very important to enable here. Pandora's Box for eight cards is nice, but it's not necessarily going to help the deck in a reliable way. Coffee Dripper will help the deck in a reliable way, and that's what I really, really want here. We can mitigate having the starting cards by one, removing the strikes aggressively at shops, and two, adding an enormous amount of card draw so that we can just draw through everything. Next removal is 100, so we could go to this shop. Uh, we do want to make our path the one with the most fires, and if we get an opportunity to face down the Burning Elite while doing that, we should take it. So it looks like we're going to fight the Burning Elite here. It's a little spooky. But I like it. So I'm definitely going to this shop then. Uh, actually, there is a three fire path this way as well. But, it, but yeah, I'd rather take out the Burning Elite. That way we have flexibility in our Act 3 path. Is the Dark Embrace worth an upgrade for the energy reduction? It, it's tempting, but I'm I'm definitely of the philosophy that the Searing Blow upgrade trumps all. Because you get increasing returns with each upgrade. So you have to compare the Dark Embrace upgrade with something like plus 10 on Searing Blow or more. Let's see how this fool goes for us. Hmm. Don't have much more exhaust stuff. We definitely want to play the Shockwave. Currently looking like Shockwave, Defend, Infernal Blade, and then we can maybe Offering to change things if we get a really good damage card. I don't even. I don't think I'm even gonna play Hemokinesis though. Certainly not gonna try to unless I can get a kill here. Hold on. Um, with Offering, 
I can do Shockwave, Double Tap, Immolate, Hemo. How much damage is that? That is... 31 twice, plus 22. To the Matthew later. 62 plus 22. 84. It has 86. We're just shy of a kill here, it looks like. Wow, too short. Nothing I can do about that either. Um, might want to use the Dexterity Potion here. This is a good fight for Dex Potion. We have two potion slots with Ornithopter. That's a good reason to use it. Oh yeah, the enemy has 88, rather. So we're four short. Even worse. Okay, let's go Dex Potion, Shockwave Defense. Guess that's fine. Offering wouldn't draw because we played the Battle Trance. That's correct. So, didn't want to do that. Is this Heavy Blade Strike? No, I want to probably play Double Defend next turn. So let's go Bash, Strike, Defend. Wow. Terrible draws. That's okay. Um, we get Double Tap, Sering Blow next turn to win. does literally infinite damage. Neko Oil. There's a good potion. And three cards that we don't want. I'm not even going to take Combust with Bird Face turn. That wasn't too, too bad as far as the first fight goes. Ah, boot thingy. Now we're talking... We don't want to have our health hemorrhage with Coffee Dripper. Ten block on turn one really helps with that. Although we could consider Bag of Marbles for vulnerable on turn one. I really like the boat thingy. Very good for our Act 2 Burning Elite fight coming up as well. Would I take a Havoc Plus? I would consider it, especially with the Dark Embrace. It has some utility. Fletcher looks pale compared to Searing Blow, right? Like, three cost, deal 32. How about two cost, deal 34? That's way better. We're going to take some events here. This could be a remove. It could be a fight against opponents who will give us further turn one mitigation in the form of the Red Mask. That's great news. Although I wish we would draw better. Come on. Hmm. Probably looking at Sneko Oil next turn. Unless we get a really good draw here. That would count as really good. Uh, see you guys later, I guess. Get 27 gold in the red mask. How's it going, Onion Knight? Why snack later when you could snack now? Don't think you've ever seen me pay my way out of this fight. I've had to a couple of times when I first started playing A20. I think I've started deck building in such a way that I don't lose this fight, usually. And I, I also look for ways to... Trade health for Red Mask, I think, is often worth it. Um, but, but there's definitely been a couple memories of me paying out to them, and uh, I've outright died to this fight a couple of times, too. Um, if your deck is too slow, like, too many footworks on silent, just completely gets obliterated by these guys. Ooh, we have to pay a curse for a relic if we want one here. Shame curse. I don't think so. I don't think I want your shame, sir. Not with a Burning Elite and two floors. No way. If I knew what the Relic was, maybe, but I certainly don't. Thank you, Boat Thingy. What a, what a draw. What a draw. That's almost bad enough to merit a Swift Pod here, but uh, a Burning Elite, so no. Don't use either potion, no matter what. 
Do not use them. Don't fall for it. It's only six damage. Well, maybe a little bit more than six damage. Now is a better time to consider a potion. But I still think no. Maybe Dark Embrace Shockwave? Ben Shockwave is a waste of energy. Hmm. It's still fine, I guess. Spring Blow kills you next turn no matter what. So as long as we can kill this guy, which we totally can, then all is well. Still not enough, huh? Uh, we always get Searing Blow, though, so it's not a problem. And no potion dropped, so I'm quite happy we saved ours. Do I want a shrug? Would be nice to have just a little bit more block in this deck. And it has card draw, so it's not really bloating the deck. Um, and it's good with corruption if we find one, which we want to find. So, yeah. 42. The meaning of life, the universe, everything. I'm not getting weakened here. I'm going to shrug. We don't necessarily need to panic yet, actually. Considering a Sneka Oil, but because we can full block and we're not getting debuffed, it's actually okay if we just wait a turn here. about double tap right now. This could be defend bash. This could be defend dark embrace, actually. I feel like we should probably at least play bash, so that if I draw a stirring blow, we can kill this fool. What was the magic number I like to get stirring blow to? 200. 200 one-shots um, spire spear, and it's the cap against the heart on A20. But for, for both of those reasons, for one-shotting Spire Spear and for the heart, you want it to be as much as 200. Don't I want to headbutt the double tap here? That's what I'm thinking about. We could double tap headbutt, but then I have to headbutt two cards, not one. So probably not, actually. Is the upgrade amount constant? No. Each upgrade is worth one more than the previous one. So, um, upgrading a card adds... Upgrading Searing Blow adds damage equal to the upgrade number plus three. Um, so, for example, going from plus five to plus six, plus six should be an additional nine damage. Forty-two goes to fifty-one. That's right. Dark Embrace has been a curse so far. But I think I'm about to play it. it. Means not playing the bash. Is it ever a headbutt, Dark Embrace? No, that only does four damage. So it's gonna be bash headbutt. No, bash defend rather. Alright. Bash defend, I'm fine with. Take one. And then potions this turn, if necessary. I would consider this to be necessary. So yes, we could have headbutt double tap, but then guess what? We'd have drawn double tap, Ascender's Bane, strike, strike, defend, and not the Immolate. So, ugh. <laughs> right? Whatever. Uh, I think this is a Sneko Oil moment here. Draw up to 10 cards and then randomize everything. We should draw a bunch of two-cost stuff. Um, or we could just play Immolate, strike, strike, right? We do 31 plus 18. We can kill this guy. We take 16. That doesn't seem worth it. 
Yeah, I was afraid of that, actually. No, this works, though. We got Searing Blow. We can do Shockwave Searing Blow. That's quite good. Immolate costs three, which is sad, but we have a one-cost Heavy Blade, a zero-cost Strike, and we drew a bunch of cards, so let's not... And we're drawing Offering next turn, so this is really not that bad. But yeah, classic uh, Sneka Oil moment. Definitely. Not allow ourselves to become vulnerable. Unacceptable. Taking 12 is fine, though. This is our... Uh, potentially our only elite fight, this act. Okay. That looks pretty solid. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can afford to play everything except Infernal Blade. Probably the play here. Rug won't draw. Not quite a kill on the Red Slaver, that's alright. I'll take uh, Battle Trance again. Actually, I'll take Shrug again. Heck, that guy, I guess. And then the slaver regenerated to full and we died. No, it's fine. I think. I think it's fine. Do I needed to play that strike? Or weak. Wouldn't have mattered. Um, Infernal Blade? What do you got? Steering Blow? <laughs> My friend! That regen got us, though, hey? Help. He's healing. No! Stop! The wounds. The wounds are too much. Okay, we can headbutt a uh, headbutt the Searing Blow, but not the real Searing Blow. Headbutt our friend, Searing Blow. Peace Pipe? Interesting. Interesting. A slow descent into madness. No, it's fine. We don't have to fight the next elite. Um, Lecter could be a bit of an issue, though. Hmm. Keep upgrading Searing Glow. Actually, Collector should be really easy, now that I think about it. Collector should not be that bad, especially with a Gremlin Horn. When an enemy dies, you gain an energy draw one. Maybe that makes an Elite not so bad. Hmm. Either way, I'm going to take three events here. Maybe we get a heal. Yeah, we can take a heal. Easy. Another time we're sleeping at the library, I think. We could look for 1 of 20 cards. Not likely that we find Corruption, but maybe we could find Feel No Pain, which I think would be a burden for now anyway. Let's sleep. That way I can comfortably fight this elite with a Gremlin Horn. Sneko. Oh, you shouldn't have. Do I bother playing Offering here, or are we good? I can potentially kill Sneko turn one. So let me potentially play Dark Embrace, so it only costs four health. Here. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go Dark Embrace. Dark Wave, Searing Blow. I like that. Can't double tap Immolate. Bummer. You jerk. 16, and we'll be weak. So I'd have to play all three strikes? That's not good. I don't like where this is going. Hang it. All right, Battle Trance, you're our only hope here. Thank you. Whew. That was almost spooky. Fentanyl Plus. If only I had a way to exhaust it. We had Corruption already. This would be insane. 
How's it going, Manson? Hello to Hong Kong. Today's an immolate cost three kind of day. Are other elites significantly easier than slavers with this deck? Yes, especially with the liquid bronze. We have a not that much fear of the Book of Stabbing. Maybe I take that Sentinel anyway. You know what? It's an eight block card currently, and later on it can be if we find a Burning Pact or a True Grid or something. It can be a, or a Corruption, of course. It could be a lot better than that. Re-remove at this event is excellent. And we'll roll into Gremlin Leader here. We draw Immolate on turn one to draw some bonus cards. I love it. Of course, it, it, double tap was the top card. That's fine. Show me Searing Glow. Bummer. That's good, though. Get punched. I think I'm going to skip offering here. We're just going to go Heavy Blade, Headbutt, Immolate. Um, Shockwave, Immolate, Searing Blow wins. Actually, Shockwave, Searing Blow wins. Is there any way to play Dark Embrace here? There is, but I have to not hit the leader. Although they won't have much health, right? Twenty-two. I can potion. Potioning might heal us. Actually, I might use the Thorns potion at the end of this fight anyway. Well, let's play the Dark Embrace for the plus two. Yeah, that was worth it. Um, so yes, let's also use this Liquid Bronze. I'd like to keep Swift Potion for Collector, and I'd like to have as many hit points as possible. Yeah, we get a Potion. We also get the Unceasing Top. If we have no cards in our hand, we'll draw a card. Unlikely that that does stuff. However, it is likely that a second offering does stuff. Seems good. But do I need double offering if I just draw the double tap immolate anyway? Probably not. Also, Ancient Pot could be really good against Collector. Hmm. If only I could play this Dark Embrace. Oh well. That was a great fight. And you guessed it. I upgrade Searing Blow, plus 10 this time, from 51 to 61. Starting to get really strong. And we already have the green key, so I'm feeling pretty good here. Hmm. This would be a really good time to draw Searing Blow. So we have headbutt and double tap in our hand. So I'm thinking about using the swift potion right now. Let's try to get a better turn one. We do want this boss fight to be short and decisive in our favor. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I feel good about that choice. Oh, do I ever. Now I'm overdrawing. Not a problem to have. Did not get to the Searing Blow, or maybe we did. Let's go double tap. Infernal Blade. No, we did not. But we can headbutt the double tap now. We can also put headbutt on top. I think that works. Yeah, now we draw a Searing Blow, so I go Double Tap, Searing Blow, Headbutt, Searing Blow. This fight's already over. 
Skeptic, thanks for the prime sub and the full year of support. GG. That's the real power of Searing Blow. Once you get to mid to late Act 2, this card starts to one-shot stuff, including bosses, and it's kind of insane. Give me that. All right, no Sneko for us. It's either Sacred Bark for double strength potions. Dozu for even more energy, but no more potions. I actually don't hate even more energy. Maybe this is a Sozu. We've got a good potion for the heart here. It's a shame I had to use the draw potion against Collector, but... It's still not a bad Sozu. Although taking Sozu with the Toy Ornithopter feels quite bad. As we lose out on that source of healing. Hmm. I think we'll be okay. really want that five energy and I'm I'm starting to recognize more I think when Sozu is worth taking when it's just a sort of shut up and take the energy situation oh we get a really good path look at this upgrades and elites galore here interesting yeah that's the most upgrades possible and the most elites possible just happens to be on the same path that's nice No question from me what we do then. Oh, good lord, these fools. I don't like you guys, you know that, right? Have I tried Shogun Showdown yet? Yes, we had a, a sponsored stream for that when it first came to early access, actually. And I thought it was delightful. Now 10 per card. Shrug once. Even better. Okay, we have Immolate next turn, but it won't do enough damage. Let's do this then. Don't forget that heal too. Second Battle Trance, I don't think is a thing. Could consider Armaments here for its ability to upgrade another card, including the Searing Blow. I think we want to look for opportunities not to take cards, though. We'll double tap target a new enemy if the first one is killed with the first attack. Nope. It will not. It will not. Ooh, orange pellets. Kind of sad with Ancient Potion, actually. Bag of Prep might be better here. More cards on turn one really helps us get a decisive start to battles. Yeah, pellets actually don't seem that good. Is the main use of pellets blocking Vuln against Heart? We already have locked in here. It's not like I'm going to get better potions, right? Wait, I'll buy this one. No! More events? Would we take an upgrade all? Honestly, well, with two offerings, actually? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe not. Think about it really hard, though. Okay, this I'll take three cards on, though. Apotheosis, please, Apotheosis. Discovery is pretty good. Secret weapon is amazing here. Finesse is perfectly adequate. You can also just skip this one. But yeah, Secret Weapon is amazing. Secret Technique is okay, but it's no Secret Weapon. This deck loves Secret Weapon. And honestly, Bandage Up is tempting, just for a little bit more healing. Discovery can also be very strong. I'll take a Discovery, actually, because it can make powers, and powers are healing. So it's also secretly Bandage Up. Lose the Ancient Potion, 70 Gold, or Shockwave to get a Relic from Ranwid. 
Normally I give Ranwood potions, but this is definitely not a time to give up our ancient potion. So, you can have 70 gold, friends. We get a sundial. Okay. That is a thing. It says heal two on it. I'm doing it. Although then I'm full next turn. Don't worry about it. Guess I have to play offering? Yeah, I do. We can double tap off from the late now. Perfect. No, no, and no. Still hoping that we somehow find a corruption. Although I'm, I'm not expecting it really to happen. At this point, one can hope. One can dream. It's an awkward battle trance. I go headbutt, heavy blade first, although I, I kind of want to have battle trance uh, back on top. I'm going to do it this way. Headbutt first, then kill you with heavy blade. Three energy left. Draw three more. Probably Dark Embrace Discovery. We have no draw though, so let's play the Discovery first. Demon form. That sounds helpful. Immolate only doing 21. This helps with the threshold. Fire Breathing is also half decent in this deck. I'll take Demon form though. And we'll play the Dark Embrace. Draw one more off Ascender's of Bane. And then we have lots of exhaust in the draw pile too. And of course we heal two again. Seems like an okay start to Repto. Yeah, we got Offering on top. I'm not afraid here. There's Immolate. Again, doing 23 is better than doing 21. Let's start with an Offering, though. Maybe I could just Shockwave Immolate. Yeah, I can. And then we... Infernal Blade. Then we Shrug. I can seek... Oh, I just draw the Searing Blow again. I was, was going to say Secret Weapon for Searing Blow. Or you can just top deck the Searing Blow and blap her again for massive damage. Dead. There's that True Grit. I knew we were going to find one. True Grit Plus is awesome here with the Dark Embrace and with the Sentinel Plus for sure. Is Secret Weapon good enough for an upgrade? No, we want it to exhaust, I think. Keep this lesson in mind. If you upgrade the Searing Blow enough times, you don't need to play it a second time. Try again. That's better. Of course. Uh, I'm not going to bother with Immolate here. This fight could actually be pretty nasty if we can't line up Searing Blow with the... turns where it's actually vulnerable, but so far looking pretty good here. I'm going to headbutt double tap. I'm going to headbutt double tap. Take one more, friend. Yeah. So I can just do Bash, Double Tap, Searing Blow. 252 damage. I'm going to take an Evolve. It heals us for two and prevents statuses from clogging the deck too much. Um, which will help in the very final fights, including against Time Eater here. But we're not going to upgrade it. We're going to upgrade Searing Blow.
Right, we do get a headbutt. Cool. Going to full health, by the way. <laughs> One more headbutt actually sounds pretty good here with five energy. I do like it. So we just secret weapon, uh, writhing mass? Is this enemy a problem? No, they're freaking dead. <sighs> Destroyed. Give me a burning pact, I think, over a second dark embrace. Yeah, I think we want the burning pact. Can you use armaments to upgrade searing blow multiple times during combat, says Horse Lover. Yes, you can. We actually once made an infinite combo and then upgraded Searing Blow to plus 100, and then killed Champ with it. Um, note that those upgrades don't stay after the fight ends. It's only within the combat. But it's still a fun thing and a powerful thing that you can do. I'll recall here, just so I don't misclick or something. Thanks. Oh no, a bunch of daggers. Whatever will I do? So, the Elites of Act 3, not exactly a problem, right? We just kind of one-shot all of them, and nothing is a threat. Second Evolve actually seems better than trying to upgrade Evolve. Yeah, let's grab one more here. Makes Awaken one a little bit troubling, but we can just delete the Evolves with Burning Pact and such. We're at 30-card deck here, but note how many of these cards are dedicated to drawing more cards. This is a draw card, 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 this is a draw card. Um, and then we have two headbutts that are all about just putting the one card back on top. So of the 30 cards, maybe 10 are support cards. We still have about 10 starter-ish cards that we couldn't get rid of. And then this is kind of the core of the deck. Uh, so we're going to upgrade Searing Blow one last time. 97 damage, Searing Blow plus 10. Not the best Searing Blow I've ever had, but it is certainly strong here. We get it turned. Yeah. So. <laughs> Rip time eater. Foolish, foolish. Foolish, foolish. Hmm. Trying to figure out if we can kill right now. If I secret weapon for headbutt plus, headbutt plus, the searing blow plus 10. Uh, I might be able to. I'm going to try this. Not sure if this actually gets a kill. Or if it's just really close. 145? Yeah, that is a kill. <laughs> it freaking deleted. Okay, who's next? Donu and Deka? No problem. No problem. Yeah, GG Tim. You love to see it. You really do. I think this is not a secret weapon for a searing blow situation, though. I think I want Art of War this turn. Secret weapon for nothing? Maybe I want a headbutt secret weapon. That sounds good.
Headbutt Impervious seems pretty good. Let's double tap Headbutt. Get Impervious and Headbutt. Battle Trance. Impervious. Headbutt the secret weapon now? Or maybe headbutt double tap. I think we headbutt the secret weapon now. And then just play one strike. Which means our Art of War was just one strike. That's kind of a waste. Oh well. Got string blow, headbutt, but I need to get to offering or the other thing. Fentanyl. So we go searing blow. She's better to headbutt double tap, but double tap. Screw get the sentinel. Now we can double tap searing blow. Let's play infernal blade also. Zoom Sentinel. Yeah, let's exhume Sentinel. And they use True Grid on Sentinel. This is excellent. Then Searing Blow a third time in the same turn. Then Headbutt Searing Blow. M. McHugh, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Now we can double tap Searing Blow. Then headbutt Searing Blow. Then play Searing Blow and we win. By the way, we have a Sundial Infinite as a way to win as well. I didn't even mention this, but we can, we can do Sundial things. Pretty sure. We need a second Shrug, actually. Hmm. Keep an eye out. Just play Searing Blow, that's right. Makes A20 easy peasy. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil, the source of this owed dad joke? You ready your pun? Dealing 22 31. Have I been here before? But what are we going to do with the fire? Yeah, we're going to upgrade Searing Blow, of course. I'm trying to think of things that rhyme with Searing Blow. It's not coming out well. How did the Ironclad win over his sweetheart with his endearing blow? King Friday asks, what's the highest possible score against the hearts? Um, the content creator Forgotten Arbiter made a really good video maximizing score. Yeah, ex exclamation point high score. Forgotten Arbiter made a 7,000 point run um, by basically abusing an infinite money loop that you can create with uh, the cards Nightmare and Wish. So that you could buy, basically, the idea is that you, there's a, a score bonus if you have four or more of the same card called Collector. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other score bonuses that you can get that are worth seeking out. But the majority of the score comes from having like a thousand cards in the deck, four copies of every card in your character's card pool, and four copies of every colorless card. 
so you get a lot of collector bonuses. What's theoretically the highest level possible for Searing Blow? There is no cap. In Endless, you can you can upgrade this to plus many hundreds, and the, the you can have a many-digit number for the damage, like hundreds of millions of damage is possible from Searing Blow. So we, we didn't get to 200, but we did get to 111. This means a double tap Searing Blow will kill Spire Spear, which is pretty good. There's Prismatic Shard. For those who want it, I like just getting more card draw with Centennial Puzzle. I think that's a good idea. And then probably a card remove so that we really get card draw. Let's dunk a strike. That sounds perfect to me. Beanfire is also tempting. That can dunk a lot of cards at once. But I think I'm just going to remove a strike. Well, oh, the shrug, that's right. We wanted two shrugs to form an infinite. You're right, Twitch chat. Let's do that. Let's have an infinite combo. And if I could buy a block pot, I would, but Sozu says we can't. Okay, not the best turn one, but definitely not the worst. Actually, I like this turn one. We get Evolve played. We get Dark Embrace played. We block most of the incoming damage. We take a little bit of damage, meaning Centennial Puzzle draws us three. We have Evolve in play, meaning these burns draw us two more. We'll have ten cards in hand next turn. That's pretty good. And we'll have six energy. So six energy, ten cards. Is perfectly fine by me. Yeah, we draw Impervious. That's good. Trends now. Okay, yeah, we did get Searing Blow. I was wondering. Alright, so I'm just going to play that here then. I, I don't want to hit the Spire Shield because that would involve turning around. Okay. That's fine. Take a little more damage here. Six more. Uh, but now I can do things. Beautiful, powerful things. still there. So I think we want to do as follows. A double tap. Play offering. Burning pack to strike. True grit this strike. Thundell activates too. Secret weapon, Searing Blow. Double tap, Searing Blow. Kill you. Burning Pact, Heavy Blade. Defend, Defend, Headbutt, Searing Blow. We might also want to try to set up Sundial for this fight. It's very reasonable. Next turn, the Spear doesn't even attack me. And I want to get two health from this as well. Yeah, headbutt burning pact. I think setting up Sundial could matter quite a bit, actually. We get it to two, though. Next turn, we get attacked for quite a lot of damage. I'm not sure we can full block it. So killing now might be wise. Let's do that. I don't want to lose any health here. Bottled Tornado is good. We can start with any power in the opening hand. I'm eyeing Dark Embrace, although Evolve is also a decent candidate. No Corruption. Yeah, let's, let's put uh, Dark Embrace in the opening hand. That sounds... Perfectly good. As we go into the heart fight here, we're going to have 60... 
eight-ish health to work with. Make a little bit more in practice. Ooh, and we drew Searing Blow on turn one. That's kind of cool. Dark Embrace Evolve, just do 111 damage. Play this to block the stinky stuff. I like it. I think we have much other decision here. Searing Blow is definitely a race against the heart. We want to kill this thing very quickly. So dealing damage every turn that we can is going to be worth it. Definitely a good turn for Impervious and Shockwave. I like those both. Not sure I want an offering here. Why are you drawing so many cards? Feels like a waste, that offering. I guess it's not actually our, our damage race against the heart, though, because we have the win condition that is the double shrug sundial thing. So our actual win condition in this fight is to exhaust all of the cards with True Good and Burning Pact. Could take a while. We draw so many cards, though, and we can recur them with Hitbutt. We have to exhaust more than 10, unfortunately. Glorious Dilemma. So maybe I should just be racing damage here. Yeah, what if we just Searing Blow harder? We have lots of opportunities to replay this card over and over again. We do 200 damage this turn, 200 damage next turn. Then we only have to survive one more hit. And we have most of the health required for that. It's probably wise. All right, so I'm going to headbutt Searing Blow then. I'm going to Offering. Good. That's most of the necessary damage. This wants to be something like Defend, Bash, Headbutt, the Searing Blow. Okay. I'm a little bit worried about two turns from now. We won't have Weaken anymore, huh? It's definitely concerning. block next turn. That sounds really hard. Maybe we did actually need to go Shrug Infinite before now. It's like it's too late to pivot. feels too late to pivot. It's going to be 47 minimum. Speed of death, 2. So we're what? Extremely reliant on discovery? 
Otherwise, I don't see how we're possibly blocking enough while also dealing damage. We are going to get Sundial Energy next turn, probably, with all these card draw. This is what's in the exhausted pile, but we don't have an a, a exhum that was a... Uh, it's only something Discovery can give. Yeah, Dis Discovery could give Exhum to give Impervious, or it could give an Impervious directly. Those would help. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we've committed to damage plans. Let's just see, see how this pans out. Okay, we got the, the easy one to block at least, so there's a chance here. That said, this draw looks pretty bad. to draw Burning Pact with Headbutt? Question mark? Try to get the Discovery and the Offering. Could Headbutt a Wound? Because that draws several. But yeah, I think it should be um, Burning Pact. But Burning Pact here. I don't think we made it. I think we're going to die to this hit. Hello? No! Oh! Both on the bottom. Oh, no. All right, so we have to Infernal Blade and... Let's see, we're at 38, right? Yeah, we don't we don't live this. Oh, we bottom decked the uh, offering and we die. Wow. Wow. Okay, I have to know, though. I have to know. So this is a loss, unfortunately, the way we play this. But I have to know, if we were to play for the Sundial Infinite, would we get there in time? So we're going to replay the fight with this draw order. And I'm going to play like the only thing that matters is exhausting all of our cards. So I'm not even going to Searing Blow turn one here. Whoops. Um, wait, drink. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I've got another potion. I can just redo that, though, since we're already redoing it. Whoops. There's no Sundial Infinite with just shrugs. Doesn't need to be infinite. Actually. Try that again. There we go. Muscle's already gone this time. Oops, should have played it all first. I want to take the beat of death, though. It's all good. This draw is pretty bad overall. Um, I guess I'm going to secret weapon for the draw two that it effectively is. but it's pretty bad. I guess I don't care about Impervious going back on top either, huh? Discovery is good. Looks like playing Headbutts is bad at the moment. We're just going to do no damage to Heart. Don't worry about that whole stinky damage thing. Images for suckers or whatever. Double tap headbutt here? No. Because, er, yeah, no. Just one butt is fine. That all seems nice. Headbutt, true grit, battle trance. Rid of Bash? I guess so. And we get the Sundial earlier, which may not be helpful, necessarily. Actually, no, we don't. Hmm. This draw sucks. Terrible.
should have triggered it first here. It's a bit of immolate. Damn it. <laughs> okay, so we end up uh, dead anyway. Okay. Okay, this was not the... Not the deck for the heart, unfortunately. We were able to cruise through most of the game with this Searing Blow, but we didn't quite have it in the heart fight. Not quite enough survivability. Uh, it's a real shame. Feels like just having maybe a weak potion in addition to the ancient potion would have been sufficient. But uh, really close, and I'd, I'd call that a pretty adequate redemption for Searing Blow. I'm, I'm sure we went over uh, a couple of believers with the Act 3 performance this deck had. GG. GG. Yeah, we just needed to remove one or two more strikes or have a feel no pain. Do I think Shockwave plus over Blow plus 11 might have won? Ooh, good question. Potentially. At the same time, I feel like it might have taken an extra turn to kill Heart without the additional Searing Blow upgrade. Bean Fire from the shop definitely could have made the difference. Bean fire from the shop could have let us do the shrug loop potentially more quickly. So that could have also been a, a key difference maker. But that was a really, really close run. Very satisfying. Don't feel too bad with that one. We are going to go again in a couple of minutes here, but it is break time Twitch chat. So I'm going to refill my legs, stretch my water. When I return, more Spire. Be right back. <laughs> 